Wir haben noch mal die Lisette da. Lisette, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you can. Uh, I had a actually I had two things that I was thinking about um, since we last talked, which is not that long ago. Um, let's see whether I, I, um, I can get back to them. One is uh, you have this awesome mm -hmm software that helps you to integrate your camera with your slides, and. I understood that most conference technology will only allow you to broadcast what you normally see on your screen, like in Zoom or in Google Meet or whatever technology you use. But our technology allows us to mix all this together. So we can have your slides, and we can have us, and we can have you as a video all together in some, I don't know, video magic. There are two people helping us doing that. <laughs> And it would have been smart to tell you that uh, beforehand, so that you. Uh, okay, so th that's actually not um, contributing to uh, to our remote discussion, <laughs> but it's also something that is one of the 100,000 things that are new when you enter this world. When last year, all of this was physical, so we had a physical conference with 400 people. Um, there was a room, we needed a microphone so that everyone could hear them, uh, everyone was, this, was at one place, and these problems didn't exist. And oh, we just were aware of them. Yeah. So we always had like remote workers, um, but we never felt their struggles. And I think since we are all experiencing mm, it now... Yeah. Um, Actually, we, we, ha we have two people who were advocating for... A lot of the things that you uh, were talking about uh, in your talk, um, like for example, uh, I think for a year we have these meeting holes now. Mm -hmm. Was it longer? Maybe it's longer. I don't know. But that's been a a tremendous change. Did you experience those holes yourself? I mean, I don't. I haven't experienced all the tools myself, but I do try a lot of them out, and I talk to people every day, so I know which ones are good just by by the the businesses that I'm speaking to. You know, and somebody starts recommending things over and over again, I think, ah, oh, I've got to go check it out. Mm -hmm. um, or you know, or, or that enough people that I know and trust have used something that I feel comfortable enough to recommend it to an audience or to people. But indeed, but your point though of of these tools is really good, and that something really small like the meeting owl, which is basically just a fancier spider phone has made a tremendous difference in terms of how your team is communicating. And I think that's a big thing with remote is that a lot of these really small things are the things that help make a high performing team. So it's because it's not rocket science, but it is a bunch of stuff like your lighting, you know, you have to think about the background, like, is it appropriate? Do you want your kids on the camera? You know, these, you know, so you have to think about all these little things that uh, seem unimportant, but they all add up. I think that's sort of where, where it's difficult. And there are also minor details that really get into the way of uh, working together remotely. Um, uh, what for example, what I remember is we had a situation where multiple people were sitting in one room, but they all had their own des uh, desktop computer or notebook. And then they, they were not smart in muting and unmuting themselves. So we always had echoes and um, uh, weird noises mm -hmm. that, that made it very um, difficult for our customers to participate. Um, and um, also those problems they don't appear in a, in a physical environment or also in a hybrid environment, you don't, you don't get it because you're only sitting in this room. There's no echo. And um, Yeah, but yeah. Uh, when I read yeah. about the set, um, I've noticed that you have been working in a 100% remote uh, company before for seven years. Is that correct? Yeah, I've been 100% remote since 2004. But uh, I was the remote office manager for Jurgen Apollo's company, Management 3.0, for almost seven years. I just uh, stopped doing that in January. Let's say uh, Corona would have hit in 2013. C could we have handled the situation like we, can, like we do today? 
because with all the tools and technology we have today that didn't exist seven years ago. Yeah, indeed. Like, you know, Zoom, I'm not even sure if Zoom was around seven no, years ago. No, or, no. Zoom wasn't yeah. around and it was still Skype. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been it would have been painful. I'll say that it is it would have been possible, but it was it would have been painful. And I think the main difference between now and then is just the number of tools out there. And then also uh, they've improved so much, like even Microsoft Teams, a whole part of my old presentations used to just be bashing Skype for business because it was so bad that mm -hmm. I couldn't help myself. But Microsoft Teams is very reasonable and they've gotten a lot better since Corona. You know, they, they, they've had some competition there. So I think the tools have just gotten so much better that there's no excuse anymore. 2013, it was still painful. Okay. Good. One of the questions I wanted to ask earlier, before Martin interrupted me, <laughs> was um, the thing I'm uh, struggling with right now. Like at Seabit Media, where we are working, we do have a lot of benefits, like for employees. We have like fresh fruits, we have massages. All that is practically gone since COVID. Um, What is a good way for employers to distinguish themselves when it comes to like things of employer branding or benefits for employees? Do you have any suggestions? I love that question. I think it's a great <laughs> question. So I'll start with, you know, when you're onboarding somebody, one of the one of the fun things that we can do with remote people is you can send them things and it's so fun to get packages in the mail. So I encourage if you're onboarding somebody new, send them a welcome package that includes a headset a webcam, you know, maybe some cards that, you know, you can show people, you know, just something fun in the package, some candy, a t-shirt, some company swag, like just send them like a nice onboarding kit that starts you off right. But then for, if you've already been working with teams, there are so many things that you can offer remotely. There's companies that, um, there's one called Tingly where you can send people on an experience. Like they get, they get a list of 20 different experiences like chocolate making or uh, parachute jumping, whatever, they have a whole Whole bunch and you know you can you can give them the choice to to choose their own experience i for uh the people that i work with now we send out gift baskets for all the birthdays and holidays so people will just get like a gift basket in the mail and one of the things that i tell people is you can send a pizza almost anywhere in the world so it's not that hard so if you notice your teams are working hard or burning the midnight oil or just you know feel like a fun gift like sending pizzas I mean, you can do it almost anywhere. But I found I have a woman in India that I work with. I can send, I've been sending her cakes and flowers for the last couple of years on all of her birthdays. I mean, the sky's the limit. So it's easier to do it in person, but we can get a bit creative. Gym memberships, you know, like book clubs, beer of the month clubs. Uh, there's so many things that you can do. You just have to get a little creative online. It's not going to be the same as in the office. That's what I mean. It's a different medium, but, you know, just learn to work in this new medium. And I would say it's also not going to be as good necessarily. So I don't want to be here to make the, the argument if remote is better than in person. Like clearly it depends. So they're mm. different. And if you're going to operate in that remote way, just make sure you're operating in the right way if you're remote. I, uh, one point that I get from this argument is um, that you shouldn't try to copy over um, the physical things into a remote setting. But you, you have to think about things that really work in the remote setting. Like a lot of things that you have been talking about are interesting and nice perks mm -hmm. for people that they can experience individually. But a lot of the things that we do here as perks in the office are more often experienced together. Yeah. If it's if it's a beer on a Friday or a a Coke um, or if it's playing pool or having a meeting in a ball, ball pit or um, so so this um, it is definitely different and uh, I think the the magic is if you don't try to copy over stuff from physical to remote but you invent the things that are interesting for remote as well yeah you, you, yeah 100 percent <laughs> Those cards. Uh, really, uh, how, how do you do that? Can you can you show us? Um, uh, the they're camera? they're just they physical. Yeah, I do just have, have like, a whole. Uh, I have a whole deck of cards here that just lays by my by my laptop. Yeah, but like, uh, is it is it one staple or do you have them uh, laid out so that you can grab the right one each time? 
Well, I know that during a presentation that these are the five that I'm going to use. So if I'm giving yeah, okay. a presentation, I'll, I'll use these five. But for other ones, and I pick the cards that I like for meetings, I know that I'll need a different set. So I'll How just pick the set cards? that I'll need. I'll send you, I'll send you these cards, but I'll send you these cards for people, other people that want to order them. They're on my website. You can just order them okay. on the website. And I have a, I have a print your, uh, you can print them yourself for free also. So I have, if people don't want to buy them, you can print them out on your, on your own. So I'll send that over. That sounds handy. But you know, it all started with sticky notes. So you don't have to have fancy cards, but you can just like write things on a sticky note. But I had so many sticky notes. I was going through so many sticky notes. I thought I better make these permanent. So that's, <laughs> That's how that happened. Cool. So um, one question I'm also particularly particularly interested in is uh, those hybrid meetings. For like in my experience, those were always like the worst meetings. Kill them. Yeah. And um, n the struggle was always like there are people in the room and then there are others fr from remote and we didn't know who wants to speak. Uh, one thing I took from uh, your presentation was everyone should look face front in the camera, into the camera, so everyone sees everyone um, through the whole time. Is there anything else you would suggest to hybrid teams? Because um, my team is really struggling with this because I love to come to the office but I'm alone almost, uh, and uh, while the others want to stay at home. So this is something I'm very, I'm particularly interested in. So I would say one, one of the things that people, you, you can make it easy on yourself by with a hybrid meeting, whereas if one person's remote, make everybody remote. And, you know, in the past, Martin, you were speaking to that the offices can be really loud and there's feedback and you can hear background noise. But now there's all kinds of great technology for that. So there's no reason that people can't be at their own workstations yet dialing into a meeting together. Um, there's noise canceling headsets. You don't have to get the super fancy ones like I've got. But, you know, I wanted the pink fancy ones. But there's also an app called crisp.ai that will take out the background noise for you. It's an app that works with everything. So, you know, there's technology to help in those open office office environments. So, but I, the keys to hybrid meetings are one, you need to have good design. So uh, you need to design the meeting well so that, uh, that there's a good agenda, something that's appropriate. You know, if you need whiteboards to have those set up, you need to have good infrastructure, which we already talked about, the meeting out, the conference room setups, the equipment. And then you have to have good facilitation skills. And just to be just to recognize how difficult hybrid meetings are. Um, so it, it depends on the problem. What I always do in a meeting is I figure out what is the biggest problem that we're having right now. And then I try to solve that problem. So if the remote participants are not able to get a word in, then I assign a buddy to the remote participants to make sure that they can be heard. Okay, problem one. The next problem is, oh, we're not really, you know, we're running over time. Okay, I assign a timekeeper. Okay, next problem. So I just attack things like one by one. I don't try to do everything at once. So in your hybrid meetings, I would say, what is the biggest thing that's frustrating? Attack that, then go for the next thing. And soon mm -hmm. we get used to it and they get better over time. But they're horrible. Hybrids are horrible. Uh, let me switch topics. Um, agile coaches, scrum masters, retrospectives, all these things that tie teams together. How do I do them remotely? I know there's a, uh, there's, a, there's a whole track during this conference uh, that will deal with that, but what are the caveats and uh, the tips that you would have for the Agile teams out there and their Agile coaches? You know, it's a tough one because with Agile coaches and Scrum Masters, you're really, you're really needing to talk with people all the time. Like yeah, as a coach, I know a lot of coaches that I talk to, they say that they just can't do it remote because, you know, you've got to be with the team. And now all of a sudden we're like, okay, well, now you're not allowed to be with the team. So, so now what? And I would just say, um, again, for to, uh, reaching out, like, One, get your team agreements in place so that you know what the core, like when it's okay to reach out. And then for agile coaches, really get good at the technology, like your one-on-one -on -one conversations. And then since we need a lot of rituals and sometimes we need a lot of speed in talking with each other, I would, I would really recommend for coaches these uh, virtual office technology platforms where you can be close to the people that you need to be close to and quickly get in contact with them and without having to schedule a meeting. So with these high touch positions, I like to call it, where you're really needing to interact with the team a lot, I really think that these virtual offices are one of the best answers that we have for this situation. And then otherwise, if I were the coach, I would just be busy calling people, 
as uh, you know, or in talking mm -hmm. and communicating with people as much as possible. So proactively reaching out to people. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Can you decipher the virtual office to so what is pervasive is chat and video calls, right? So I can always chat my coworkers and I can video call them. That that should be a normal in in today's yeah. pandemic stays for all organizations, in my opinion. At least that would be my assumption. Um, so how, what does the virtual office add to, I could chat you and then we could have a video session? You are, with chat and video, you're basically mimicking, you're simulating one of those virtual offices. So in a sense, though, that could be good enough. If that, if your team is really engaged and they're going between synchronous and asynchronous really well with chat and video, you may not need the virtual office. What the office gives you is presence. The ability to see that people are there and maybe even what they're working on, who they're talking to, what conversations are happening. So, I, you know, presence is what you get with the virtual office. That's the okay. main benefit. And as we are reselling and one of the biggest Atlassian partners, where does documentation reference come in? As we, like, Confluence and Jira are those tools where you can, like, put in your docs and uh, have your tasks. Uh, where is in this chat, video, virtual office thing, do you, do you see intersections there or is it just a different area? Well, they're different areas, but I kind of see them as different rooms. Like the, the virtual office gives you presence, you see sort of the floor plan, but then your documentation, it's kind of like the filing cabinets that we used to have in the office. I don't know if People are old. Some people are not old enough to remember. But, you know, you have this like filing cabinet area and that's like your documentation that you would have. And actually, one of the things that I, I didn't get to in the talk because it just goes into two, two into the weeds is asynchronous communication and getting good at asynchronous doesn't mm -hmm. just mean getting good at chat. It also means that your information architecture is set up in such a way that information is easily findable and you can add things to it and take things out. So what people don't realize with async is that it encompasses not only communication, but also your information architecture of how people are accessing information. So I see them as a, di I, I see them, you know, it, it starts to turn into a lot of tools is, uh, is really what it comes down to. Cause you've got your JIRA and your confluence for the documentation and tasks. You've got your virtual office for the presence. You've got your chat for the talking. And I think that's why the team agreements start to become important because you've got to, you want to experiment with stuff, but then you want to narrow it down to the core essentials. Like you don't want to do too many tools. So, you know, I recommend the virtual offices, but if it's just too much, then stick with the, with Slack and video. Yeah. Um, one last question from me, and I'm sorry for not letting you in on this, but uh, um, if you're talking to teams, what are the main competitors, especially for small teams, which are more nimble, in my opinion, uh, for Jira and Confluence? What tools do they use if they don't use Jira and Confluence? Oh, man, there's, you know, Asana is one of probably one of the bigger ones. Now, Trello, I think, is the most popular one. I mean, even my graphic designer, Alfred, uh, he is a total artist, like in every way. There's no structure. There's no deadlines. You know, it's kind of it's like, <laughs> but Trello works for him. He totally understood Trello. And now we have our list and that works. So there's hundreds of, of tools, Basecamp, Zoho. I mean, there's hundreds of them out there if you're not using Jira and Confluence. And a Google Docs, I think, is one of the main ones. Mm -hmm. the, the, just the Google suite. Uh, how, that, that's the perfect ending for me because we're struggling with our big customers all uh, going by default um, in a Microsoft Office 365 direction. Um, and we're a Google partner. So uh, thank you so much for the shout out for uh, the, the G Suite <laughs> and the Google Workplace uh, Workspace. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Lisette, thank you so much. It was very nice having you. Uh, thanks for your contribution and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference as a participant as long as you want. Thank you so much. I will totally do that. I appreciate being here. Cool. It was a pleasure. See you, Lisette.